Now could find Augustine. Good touch. He's turned him. Oh my god, Augustine. What a goal from Leeds United. Have we actually taken the lead at Old Trafford? Now Augustine could bring this one inside us. So this has to be a goal. Jean Kevin Augustine. What would we do without him? So here we are back again another episode of the Leeds United Career Mode Series episode number 9. Last episode was huge for us as we secured one of our best signings of this series so far, Edinson Cavani for free on a pre-contract deal and today's episode we're going to continue exploring more pre-contract options. Of course on the pitch we've got some really difficult fixtures and this one against Spurs away is going to be huge against Mourinho Spurs. They've already beaten us once this season. I don't want them to have a league double over us. And also, we're up against Chelsea in the FA Cup. We've gotten super unlucky with the draw, but we'll see how things go. Lots of transfer business to go through. Premier League action, FA Cup, round of 32 against Chelsea. It's going to be one hell of an episode. And if you guys are enjoying the series, keep the support coming in by dropping a like in the video. Subscribe if you're new around here. And let's get this underway. Okay, so time for a press conference. And if you guys want to see your questions being answered, drop them down in the comment section below. First one of the day. Train Augustine because his rating is not increasing and he's the star of your team. Now, you're right about one thing. He is our star. He is our main man with his stats. They're just incredible. 17 games, 12 goals in the Premier League. Like, honestly, this guy is our main man. But the problem is he is on loan here at Leeds United. If we continue to train him and increase his overall, he's going to get even more expensive for us to sign in following seasons. And that is why... I'm refusing to train him for now so we can get him on a bargain deal next season. That is my approach. Let me know if you guys think it's right, but that's what I'm going to do because I want Jean-Kevin Augustine next season and I don't want to be spending a fortune on him, so that's the plan. Next up, sign Walter Benitez. He's a great keeper and he would fit your playing style at Leeds United. Now, you would have seen him initially at the start of the video in, of course, the short list and well... He is one of the players available for free on a pre-contract and it seems like a realistic transfer. He's Argentine, Bielsa is Argentine as well. And if we can get a proper good keeper for free, next season things will be easier for us. As good as Kiko Casilla is, he's going down in his overall. The player we've got, Meslier, on loan. He is, yeah, as I just said, on loan. So we're going to have to try and sign him next season because I think in real life he's confirmed his transfer to Leeds. But having an 80 plus overall keeper is so, so important in this game. And I think we gotta go for Benitez and that's why in this episode, I'm gonna try and wrap up this transfer. Next up, in the last few episodes, you've had some stamina issues. Do you think you might try and expand your second team to help out? Honestly, I would love to. I would love to make more signings for this season to give us more squad depth. Because if you look at the team right now itself, there are quite a few players who are low on stamina. But there's just simply nothing we can do about it because we don't have the funds to go out there and bring in quality players to improve the team. And that's why we're going to have to use our thin squad and get through the season. Thankfully, though, we've only got two competitions to worry about. The Premier League and the FA Cup. So it is definitely manageable to get through with a thin squad. But injuries happen. We're going to be in a bit of a pinch. But yeah, that's why no signings for this season. We're going to invest everything in pre-contracts. So next season, we won't have to deal with squad depth issues to this extent. But yeah, that is the plan. Press conference done. Let's move on. Did anyone expect Jean-Kevin Augustine to be this good at the start of the season? He reminds me of Timo Werner at Chelsea, Jamie Vardy at Leicester City, some of the heroes of my FIFA 20 career modes because he's playing at a similar level, goal after goal after goal and it's just crazy to see him play this well. Anyways, because of it he picks up yet another player of the episode award. Now last episode if you remember, the wage and transfer budget wasn't affected by the signing of Edinson Cavani which is a big positive for us because we can now make more pre-contract signings. Of course that money will go away from us next season but i'm not too worried about that we've got season objectives to get some added money pre-season tournament next season as well and also the fact that so many players are on loan here next season when they go back to their parent clubs we're gonna free up wages there as well so i'm going in for pre-contract signings in this episode i think we still need to sell someone like patrick bamford before we can move in for james rodriguez's wages and all are just too much but i really want to bring him in i think Having someone like James, you know, someone who's brilliant on set pieces with free kicks and all, a good passer of the ball who can control the game, 
would be unbelievable. So signing him is one of my priorities. Plus, he'll be so much fun to use. You normally don't use players like this in career mode because of his pace and all, but I want to give him a go. So we'll try and go for him, but we're going to have to wait. Until then, I want to try and bring in Walter Benitez to Leeds United. So let's approach to sign and get this deal done. Okay, he wants a crucial squad role, which let's be real. I mean, it's obvious, isn't it? We're going to give him a crucial squad role, a three-year contract length as well. Absolutely fine for me. Disregarding the release clause, and these are his demands. Wow, he does want quite a bit. So we'll remove the clean sheet bonus, because I just don't like having that. We'll bump up his wages to 60,000, which is pretty fair, I'm not going to lie. But you know what's funny, guys? Players like Click and All, who were much lower rated, had the same amount of wages as, let's say, Walter Benitez, which makes no sense whatsoever. But anyways, let's see if he's willing to accept this. He wants a bit more in wages, which I'm willing to pay. So we'll accept this. And with that, another deal done for next season. Of course, this season, no new signings possibly, but for next season, the squad is coming together. I genuinely can't wait to get season two underway with Benitez coming in, with Cavani coming in. Yeah, a couple of nice South Americans, and we could make it three with James Rodriguez as well. The South American trio coming in hot for us, but... For now, we've signed Cavani and Walter Benitez. What a start to this episode. Okay, now, with the signing of Benitez, we have lost out on a bit of cash. And that is because of the signing bonus. So I presume the signing bonus is deducted, not the wages. That is still acceptable. So hopefully we'll have enough money to bring in James Rodriguez by the end of this window. But we will need to sell maybe someone like Bamford. So for now, we're going to focus on the Prem and all. And we'll get back to transfer soon. Quick look at our season objectives. I'm honestly so glad we made, you know, a bit of a change to the objectives on how they work. You know, by giving us 5 million for every objective we complete. It just makes things more interesting on, you know, or puts more pressure on me to complete these objectives. So hopefully in this episode, we can make a bit more progress with Brooks or even the possession-based objective. Talking about the Premier League, we've got a big game coming up against Spurs, who are sixth in the league. We're comfortably in ninth, so I'm not too worried about this. In fact, I'm thinking we may rest a few players, a few key players in this one, so we can focus on the Chelsea game. That might be the play, because we're comfortably in the top half of the table so you know what i'm gonna do that not going to lie i'm really not sure how things are gonna turn out in this game because we don't have augustine i'm keeping him fit for the fa cup game now this might prove to be a ridiculously stupid decision but a lot of you guys are telling me to you know focus more on the fa cup because it gives us that half chance of getting into the europa league so that's what i'm doing Bamford and Enketia up top. You know what? I want to switch them around. I want Enketia on the left. We've got Brooks starting to give us that extra bit of quality, but I might bring him off at halftime or something. Robert starts. Ben White, Juan Foyth. It's still a good team, but no Calvin Phillips and no Augustine. They're going to be a big miss for us, but let's get into this one and see what can happen. And that is the Spurs team we're facing, and I'm not surprised. They've got some really good players in there. Kane, Deli Ali, Ryan Sesegna, Mora. They've got a good defense as well. They've of course, signed Pizek from Dortmund, which is interesting. But apart from that, it's the standard Spurs team. It's going to be a tough one. They've beaten us before, and I don't want that happening again. The last time we used the 4-1-2-1-2 narrow formation, things did really work in our favor. I'm hoping for more of the same here. And also, this could be one of Bamford's last games in a lead shirt. Let's hope we can put in a good performance. See Zanketia does really well to find Brooks. Could be a goal for him. An early chance, and we've taken the lead against Spurs. David Brooks. The former Bournemouth player has stepped up for us in an unbelievable manner. In a game where we don't have our key players like Augustine and, of course, Calvin Phillips, we needed someone to step up. And, well, David Brooks is here to do exactly that. Playing in that cam role, you can't stop this guy with his weaker right foot. He slots this one home past Hugo Lloris and we get a shock lead against Spurs. This 4-1-2-1-2 narrow formation, man, it's got to be a formation we use more often. Next season with Cavani coming in, we might have to give this a go more often. Alioski now with space to really exploit. This is what happens when you've got the 4 one 2 one 2 narrow formation. Your fullbacks get so much space to work with. Alioski tries a cutback. Oh, that might actually go in. Hugo Lloris collects that. Would have been a comical goal if that would have gone in. Ryan Sesegna on the ball. He's got a bit of pace on him. We all know that. Still at Ryan Sesegna. Takes it backwards. And now Spurs keeping a bit of possession, which is worrisome as he gets past me there. Lo Celso. Oh, I think Foyt got nutmegged against this former team. Now it's Deli Ali. Cut back inside for Lo Celso. Big save right there from Kiko Casilla. That probably should have been 1-1. Ooh, chance for Lucas here. Shimmy past me. Still Lucas Mora. Good dribbling. Cross comes in. Deli Ali with the header. Free chance for Harry Kane. How is he not offside there? 
I think one of our players towards the corner flag was keeping him on and well it's a brilliant finish from Harry Kane no complaints for me whatsoever because on the volley to do that in the box you've got to be a top class goal poacher and that's exactly what Harry Kane is I mean let's take a look at that again yeah I think the player on the right left side of the screen I think on the left he was keeping him on fair enough Harry Kane Alioski who's been moving forward so well in this game and now it's Enketia Shimmy's past one, still Enketia, it's a brilliant run and he gets his first goal in a Leeds United shirt and it had to be against Spurs, a former Arsenal player, he's Arsenal through and through and for him to get a goal against the, the North London club I think is a massive moment and we've been criticising Enketia from the start of the season for his lack of performances but here he's clearly shown why he's got the talent as he gets past basically three defenders and it's a fantastic finish past Hugo Lloris as we make it 2-1 how are we playing so well? This formation, man, is just broken in game. It's so, so good. And Ketia grabs a goal and, well, Leeds United cruising 2-1 against Spurs. Come on. And Ketia's goal literally came at the perfect time. We're leading 2-1, half time. Come on, guys. Let's push on. We might be able to pull off a win here. That'll be three straight wins for us in the Premier League. Let's get it done. Second half and it looks like Spurs are starting off strong. Lucas Mora with a chance and what? How? How has that gone in? Well, if we ever needed a reason why we need a top class keeper, well, that's that because Lucas Mora, left foot out of nowhere, has put that in. That's the quality you get with having, you know, top class players, I suppose. Fantastic from the Spurs attacker. How has he managed to squeeze that in? I'm still confused. And what on earth was Kiku Kassia doing there? A big mistake from him. It's too all. Back to Brooks. He's done really well here. Could go down in the box. He does and we get a penalty for that. Is that our first penalty of the season? Because I don't recall getting any penalties this season. David Brooks, man, the dribbling there was just on point. Like, what even is this game right now? We could be making it 3-2 and taking the lead here. Come on, let's get it done. Now, we're trying to make progress with the objective. And also, David Brooks earned this penalty. We're going to take it with him. I'm going to try and put it in the top right corner. And let's hope this works. Go on, Brooks. It's absolutely inch perfect from David Brooks, who gets his second of the night as Leeds United make it 3-2. I'm so glad I've learned how to take penalties. Hopefully EA don't change the mechanic for FIFA 21 because I've literally just learned how to get my pens perfect in the last month or so. But come on, we've made it 3-2. We might be able to pull off a famous win. Like, this game has been crazy. Goals galore, I guess. Deli Ali now on the ball. Looks for Davies. That should be Alioski's ball. How's he not winning that? And now Lo Celso charging inwards. Good challenge right there. But Lo Celso still has it. And now it's Harry Kane. This is not looking too kind for us. Lucas Mora on the ball. I've got to stop him from turning us. Still Lucas Mora. He's completely turned me there. Fair enough, Lucas. Like, he's been absolutely brilliant in this game. So hard to defend against. His dribbling, man, is just too pinpoint. And close control-wise, it is, I guess, second to none, at least on this pitch right now. Fair enough. Lucas with a great goal. It's 3-3. It's been a cracking Premier League fixture. Do we have enough time to potentially score a winner? Let's see. Oh, that's problems for us. Deli Ali finds Harry Kane. I'm sure Kane is onside there. Oh my god, that is a massive save from Kiko Garcia. That could potentially save us a point, but they have another chance here. Ali with the shot. It comes off the post and Eileen clears it away. Good lord, the chaos right now. We should be 4-3 down here. We might actually still be 4-3 down. Kane shoots, but oh my god. That hits the side netting. The chaos there was just crazy. And somehow we've avoided to concede there. Here we go now. For sure. Looks for Brooks. Flicks it up once. Oh my god. That's brilliant from Brooks. Shoots it. Oh my god. Big save from Hugo Lloris. The flick up volley from Brooks was world class. But Hugo Lloris saw that one coming. And with that it's full time. This really was a Premier League classic. Three all against Spurs. It could have gone either way. Really happy with the way we attacked in this game. Our fullbacks were flying. And our strikers were good at holding up the play. Brooks was unbelievable. But yeah, this formation defensively can cause you problems. And that's exactly what happened. 3-3 though. A draw against Spurs. I'll take it. Okay, now this is a bit weird. Calvin Phillips wants to play more games. And he's unhappy, kind of. Like, come on, dude. You're basically our best midfielder in the team right now. And you're going to be playing every game. It's just that your stamina was low in that last game. And that's why we rested you. So come on. A lot of you guys have been complaining that I've been pronouncing Luke Ailing's name completely wrong. Well, I fixed that for you guys. It's Ailing. I get it now. 4.2 million offer coming in for him. I don't want to sell him because I'm using him in the team right now and I kind of like him. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to reject offer. He's pretty good down that right side, maybe in future seasons. But on the other hand, Dallas, 
I'm okay with letting him go. I know he offers a squad depth, but we've already got Saka who can play in that position. Alioski is brilliant, so I'm okay with letting him go, but we'll negotiate to get the best possible fee. That should free up a lot of wages for potentially the James Rodriguez deal. So let's get this done. 2.4 million, proposed new transfer fee. I want 3 million for him. If I can get 3 million for him, that'll be absolutely perfect. Hopefully I'm not asking for way too much money. Oh, they, they're willing to only pay 2.4. Let's counter with 2.6, which is his value. I think that I think that should work. 2.6 million. And they're willing to match that. Brilliantly done. We're trying to squeeze as much money as possible from every player we sell. 2.6 million for Dallas. We're still comfortably in ninth spot after that draw with Spurs in the Premier League. One point off Everton though, which is good to see. I would love to finish top eight this season, but... It'll be a tough ask. We're gonna have to wait a bit on the Dallas transfer to see how that goes through, whether it goes through or not. So until then, FA Cup round four, Leeds United versus Chelsea. Let's get right into it. So as I said before, stamina is certainly a big issue for us in this one. Look at Forshaw, White, Foyt, Casilla. They're all pretty low on stamina, but there's nothing much we can do. We've still got some key players in here like Augustine, Pablo, Helda Costa, Saka and all, but... Yeah, stamina issues will be a big problem for us in this season, but let's hope we can get through this one. Leeds, Chelsea, FA Cup, Ellen Road, but of course the underdogs, but you never know in these cup competitions, anything can happen. And that's the Chelsea team we're facing, and honestly, it hurts my OCD to see Umtiti playing as a right centre-back and not as a left centre-back, and him in as vice versa. Yeah, it's just one of those things that annoys me. So they've got Giroud up top, Pedro, Pulisic, decent attack with a bit of pace. Good midfield, I mean, that's the classic Chelsea team. They're not holding back here, are they? So, they're taking the FA Cup seriously. One thing's for sure, I don't want this game being a draw because I really don't want to be playing a repeat fixture or a replay because that, that'll be brutal on our players for stamina and all. So, I'm just hoping we settle this game here. If we go through, we go through. If we get knocked out, we get knocked out. But, early chance for us. Here's Augustine on the turn. Unbelievable from Augustine. Gets the shot off, but... Couldn't get it on target, but God, this guy's dribbling, man, is just... I don't know how he does it, like, honestly, how is he skipping past challenges so easily? I have no idea. N'Golo Kante now looks for Pulisic, inside for Giroud, and well, well, well. Cup competitions is in our cup of tea, I suppose, as Giroud has made it 1-0 for Chelsea, and we're a goal down. We had an early chance for the Gustine, which we really couldn't capitalise, and... Well, Chelsea have taken their chance with a goal down. This is not the best of starts, or not the start we wanted. Looks for Aspiliqueta. We're trying to get the ball off him, but we can't. Aspiliqueta once again. Saka does really well there. For sure now. Cleverly done to find Calvin Phillips. We could do something from this attack. I see so much space for Dallas, and I'm going to try and release this one for Saka. I've pulled it off, and now it's Augustine. Controls it. Ah, oh, the challenge at the end from number 21. Augustine was so close. Helder Costa, the first touch was absolutely incredible. Tries to cut back. Augustine could shoot here. How has Kepa saved that? No way. Augustine doesn't miss those chances. Wow. Still 1 0 Chelsea, but it really should be 1 1. A massive chance gone. Half time against Chelsea, and it's so brutal that we missed that chance with Augustine because I thought we were going to make it 1 1 right there, but wasn't the case. Second half. We're creating chances, we just got to keep pushing and I'm sure we'll get the equaliser. Marcus Alonso, chance now for Chelsea. How has Alonso gone through there? I think it's done. I think we're out of the FA Cup. There's no way we're now overturning a 2-0 lead from Chelsea. How did Marcus Alonso just burst through our defence? I really don't get it. Let's take a look at this. The challenge was perfect there for me and uh, a bit of luck for Chelsea. Fair enough, the 2-0 up. The state of the stamina on our defenders is is a bit crazy. We'll bring on Eiling for Foyth, who's pretty much dead. We'll also bring on Alioski. We'll use him as a centre-back. Forshaw needs to come off as well for Roberts. Stamina issues, man. They're going to cost us this season. Full time against Chelsea. It was a bit embarrassing, but hey, it is what it is. We're out of the FA Cup. Now, I know I say this pretty much whenever we get knocked out from a cup competition, but... In this case, it's truly something that'll benefit us. There was no guarantee that we'll win the FA Cup. So getting knocked out now means lesser games for the rest of this season. And that is just overall better for us with how thin our squad is. We've got only the Premier League to worry about. Not gonna lie, it's a bit funny that we kept 59% of the ball and we could just muster one shot on target. So... Yep, that was a pretty bad thing, but ultimately helps us out with the objectives. I am not a fan of this at all because we needed the funds to secure James Rodriguez. Now on deadline day, we don't really have much time. I'm not sure if we can pull it off here. This is going to be difficult to do. 
we might not be able to sign James Rodriguez because there's no way we can afford him. Literally no way we can afford him right now with the funds we've got. This is going to be difficult now. We might have to find another player to sign or something else to do. Okay now, offer coming in for four sure. 1.3 million. I don't want to sell him, but if I want to sign James Rodriguez, I got to do it. He's on insanely high wages as well. We'll negotiate to get the fee high up a bit. And if that is possible, it's it's okay, I guess. We'll see. Um, 1.3, all right. Let's, let's counter with 1.7 and see if they're willing to accept that. Please do it, man. 1.4. Come on. Okay, let's counter with 1.5. That should work. 1.5 million for for sure. There you go. They're willing to accept that. And let's see if that deal goes through. Also, why does Fiorentina want Adam for sure? Doesn't make too much sense. Okay, this is a big problem. This is a massive problem because it seems like Spurs want to sign James Rodriguez. And if we don't act quick, this transfer is not going to happen. We need the transfer to go through. We really do need the transfer to go through. And we'll find out now whether it does or not. And I don't think it's going to go through in time. That is such a bummer. We get a big offer for Dallas. And I'm not sure if I should accept this or not. But oh my god, is it chaos right now. You know what? I'm not going to accept the offer for Dallas. Because I can't have both Dallas and Forshaw leaving. We're going to reject the offer for Ailing, But this is a huge problem now. I don't think James Rodriguez is a possibility. One hour to go on deadline day. And it all depends on this now. It really does. For sure sold. Brilliant. I think we now have the cash to move in for James Rodriguez. Let's see. Okay, now, can we put it off? James Rodriguez. Spurs are after him as well. Can we convince him to join Leeds United for the upcoming season? The golden boy. Remember how good he was in that World Cup back in 2014. His career has gone downhill since then, but still a quality player to have. Who this is going to be difficult. Crucial squad role as expected. He expects that. We know that as well. A two-year contract. Let's let's get that to three. Come on. Come on, James. A three-year deal is what we want. He's willing to work with that. Brilliant. No release clause. Perfect. And now this is where things get interesting. The wages. The freaking wages. Let's offer him 160 and just see what he thinks about it. About 600,000 as well as a signing bonus. Is he going to accept it? Is he going to reject it? I'm not so sure. That's a fair offer. My client is happy with that. Let's go. James Rodriguez, done deal with Leeds United. We've just signed the Colombian superstar. In this window, three South American superstars have just joined Leeds United. Well, Walter Benitez is not really a superstar, but still a good player nevertheless. What a window for us next season, man. I genuinely can't wait for it. Well, looks like Cavani's already excited to be at Leeds United. He's not leaving my menu screen for some reason. Look at him there on the right side of the screen. You know what's crazy? Because of how the wage budget thing works, we might still have money for another transfer. Let me know in the comment section if we should pull off another transfer for a pre-contract or something to help us out next season. Let me know in the comment section. I'm not going to get through deadline day for now. We'll keep that for next episode. One more signing, your decision in the comments. It's been an up and down episode for our season objectives as we failed the Dream Cup run objective. But on the other hand, we've made progress with the taking control as well as the Brooks challenge. So not all bad. Before we wrap the episode up, quick discussion, played of the episode award. Brooks has to be nominated as he was superb against Spurs, but well, a pretty cool nominee is Enketia. He had an absolutely amazing episode, was so good at goal and an assist against Spurs. And well, he is your other nominee. It's between Enketia and Brooks. Make your decision in the comment section below. But with that, it's time to wrap up another episode of the Leeds Career Mode. It was a major episode for the series. The signings we've pulled off are going to help us so much come next season. And I can't wait for it. But for now, we're ending off the episode. Drop a like if you've enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new around here. And I'll catch you guys very soon for another episode of the Leeds Career Mode.